What's up, YouTubers? It's your boy, Polly C, coming at you with another action-packed video. We're out here in a town called Bremerton. And I'll tell you what we'll be doing. I'm going to mix up some chemical. I know a lot of people like to know what we use, so I will be sharing that. There's always a link in the description. I grabbed these two small baskets at the Dollar Tree, and this allows me to keep my caput, which is the CLO2, up on the top there. I keep, I think I've got maybe two or three jars of this. It mixes at half a tablespoon to two gallons of water, so it goes a long way. Keep my measuring cups and whatnot over there. And today we're gonna be using, of course, my favorite, green dragon that's going to be our general go-to cleaner we are going to boost with the simply citrus that is an orange oil or <clears throat> excuse me d limonene you can see there it is a plant-based product and a safe choice product it does have a little bit of peroxide in it as well and i'm going to also put some clo2 the caput and we'll probably mix about a two gallon jug. What we have here is uh, fire damage, smoke damage. And what the, the client rented this room out to somebody who decided to put a square box fan right here on this side of the closet. And there was some other stuff in there and face it out of the closet blowing towards the window behind me <clears throat> and the motor overheated on the fan and the box fan caught fire or i should say the motor caught fire and it ran for a while while it was on fire blowing and billowing out a lot of smoke you could see along the edge here he tried to clean that he's gonna have to repaint the doors on the closet and everything and it blew soot everywhere so we're going to go ahead and tackle it. We just vacuumed with the Hoover Hush Tone. Got it all vacuumed up, all the, as much loose soot as we could. And now we're dealing with the water-soluble soils or soot that are going to need a solution to break it down so that we can transfer it. And the big, big part of what's working in here, well, the kaput is going to help with the odor obviously <clears throat> the green dragon is an encapsulant so there's going to be zero residue it also has wetting agents in the solution which is going to help to push down the other chemicals in deeper into the fibers especially that simply citrus the orange oil or D-limonene, that stuff is just magic, especially with grease, dirt, um, soils, and, and soot, you know, the smoke soot that's embedded in there. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what happens with uh, smoke from a fire? It can cause significant damage to the carpets. It can leave behind strong odors, which we're going to take care of today. It also can permanently discolor the carpets. And it leaves a soot residue, which we're pulling up. But it can be difficult to remove. So obviously we told the client there's no guarantee on uh, the full removal. And if the heat has uh, caused some degradation to the carpet fibers, there's nothing we can do. So... The uh, other thing that smoke uh, particles can, they can do is they can penetrate deeper into the lower regions of the carpet fibers, and that is going to make it challenging to fully eliminate the odor uh, without you know, a thorough cleaning and then the deodorizing process with the CLO2 or the caput. And I'm laying it on there heavy. I told the customer the traditional half hour to one hour dry time will not be in effect here because we're going to be laying it heavy. I'm spraying it down with the work sprayer and I put the 
spray head angle at 25 degrees instead of the traditional 40 degree angle that I pre-spray with so I can help get a little more oomph on it and force it down into the fibers. And like I said, we're laying it down. You see me, I'm going over it again. This is gonna loosen everything up and get it ready and emulsified to be transferred from one fiber to the other. And the other fibers that we're gonna be using for transfer is going to be a red 3M scrubbing pad. And we'll do that first to kind of dig deep and get as much of that discoloration up as we can. And then we'll follow with Iron Man cotton pads to extract. You can see already the red 3M pad is just going ham there. I did bring in a spotter bottle. You could see it riding along there in the tank on the swirly machine. I've got that mixed with Magic Bullet in case we found any mysterious spots or needed a little additional uh, treatment. I'm not sure that we're going to be needing it as it looks like this is doing a fantastic job. As far as the corners go, you'll see that uh, here he won't be able to get fully into the corner. You see that corner there? And I'll show you how we're going to deal with that. I do like to have that pad kept away from the wall. I don't know if you, you know, what that pad will do is if you leave it long enough against the edge of the door or the edge of the wall, it, it can actually peel the paint right off the wall. So we try to be careful, move along methodically. You can see here, it is just really digging all that stuff. And you, what's gonna happen here is we're not looking to remove that soot and soil with the red pad. pad. It is transferring some of the soot into the bottom of that red pad for sure. But it's the pad is intended as a pre-scrub. So we're just going and we're pre-scrubbing this entire room. Getting up against the edge of the wall. I'll go back over with a clean pad probably and run my foot across the wall boards just to make sure we didn't push any soot up along that white wallboard trim. This is one room cleaning today, so it falls within my minimum cleaning. I did let the client know that the cost of the minimum is usually two rooms in a hallway. So if they wanted an additional room and a hallway done while we're there, I'm happy to do that. A lot of carpet guys, when they have a minimum and someone agrees like this, they wanted the smoke and all that remedied, it's, it's still worth the minimum cost that I'm charging. But a lot of carpet guys, if they don't ask, they won't tell them that, hey, you could get another room in the hallway done for the same price. You know, everything's included, clean, deodorize, and protect with our low moisture system. So I have always, year after year, I always let the client know, especially when it's a one room, I just tell them, hey, you, you fall within the minimum. Here's what you're going to get for that. If you, by chance, have an additional room in a hallway, I'd be happy to add that on at no additional charge. And if they have just one room of carpet and the rest of the house is wood or tile or whatever, we'll allow somebody to mix and match, <clears throat> which means you can do the uh, another room or a kitchen and a hallway or, you know, I'll even do a bathroom in place of a hallway. If it's tile or wood, we pretty much clean everything with the same solutions so that doesn't uh, deter us or cause us any added work we can go from one room to the next I will use probably a microfiber 
pad on wood or a two-way pad, which is looks like a Iron Man pad, but it's actually a polyester material. So it glides a little easier, spins a little faster, and no risk of damaging or leaving any swirls behind on the wood. But this client was happy just getting this one room done. This is the centerpiece, excuse me, from the red 3M pad. Excuse me. I'm going to use it to get the corners. Got to get on my hands and knees, but that happens occasionally. I do have a scrub brush that we use for tile. I could have bought that in the tile brush and did this the same way, but no need. We'll get her taken care of here. Scrub it, and then I'll get it uh, by hand with the other clean Iron Man when I'm done. Pretty simple. You don't you don't want to leave something that noticeable. You know, the client knows you're in there. You're not using a square or rectangular machine. You're using a rotary or, in some cases, an orbital oscillating machine. They're round, and they know that a 90-degree angle corner, you're going to have some difficulties getting in. Now, for the most part, if you're doing a general cleaning and it's not fire damage or smoke damage like this, uh, if you can point out who's been walking in those corners, I'd love to see that because <laughs> I don't know anybody that walks in the corners, maybe a cat or some or a, a hamster, I don't know. But for the most part, just a general vacuuming does the job in all the corners and behind the doors. We also carry a, a tool called a doodle bug. <clears throat> the doodle bug, you can look that up. <clears throat> Excuse me, you can look that up on the uh, in the link in the description. It'll take you right to my supplier and just type in doodle bug. You can see what it is. I've got used it a few times in a few videos. And that's good for the 90 degree corners or small closets, you know, like in a commercial setting, if you're doing a bunch of hotel rooms, you don't want to be swinging this machine into a tiny closet so you can do it. Uh, it's almost by hand, but the doodle bug's on a pole, almost like a flat mop. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is our second job of the day. We're actually sitting here getting ready to eat our lunch and then head to the next job. I thought, since I have a good signal, I would upload this video, get some content out there for you. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever had any fire damage or smoke damage, and if it was minor like this, not the whole house, how did you remedy it? Or did you call somebody? I know in our area, if it was really bad, you know, she she would have called Surf Pro and they go through and you know they're you know they do fire damage, restoration, flood damage. And I think they bill your the insurance company also, the house insurance. But in this case, looking at the pictures and that they sent over and then talking in the text, I didn't think we'd have a problem getting it out. And at this point I think it's all going to come out. You could see here the Iron Man going over and extracting the soil. You, you see that little, uh, right between the sliding closets, there's a little plastic clip in the middle that retains these sliding doors from swinging. If you're in the business, do not get your machine close to that plastic clip if you do and it grabs hold of that clip and breaks it right out of place now you're going to be spending additional hours or coming back later in the day with a new clip that you had to go to home depot or lowe's or your local hardware store and you're going to have to replace it it's only held down by a couple screws but now your day goes from smooth in and out, you know, spend the quality time on the job that you need to spend. It can actually go into, yeah, you did everything you should have done, got paid and left, but now you've created another hour, hour and a half worth of work to 
to go and repair somebody's damaged items. So be careful. That goes for getting too close to doors, you know, those hollow doors. Sometimes the pad will get up underneath a tight door and just pop the whole bottom half of the door off, split the door in half. As well as furniture, you know, you get too close to some furniture, it could be a problem. We typically don't move any furniture. We let I let them know ahead of time when I'm booking the job to move what you want moved before we get there. That prevents any liabilities. You know, I do carry the protector squares in my van in the event that, you know, I do move something for some strange reason or somebody has moved it. You know, if you're in the business, you show up, you tell them we don't move furniture. You show up and they moved everything into the middle of the room. <laughs> and now they're like, well, I thought me and my husband would move it all back for you. So now you got to vacuum the perimeter clean the perimeter, move the furniture back into original place, put down your protectors. Then now you got to do the second job, which is repeat everything that was covered by the furniture. So now you're doing vacuuming the center, pre-spraying the center, cleaning the center. It can be a nightmare. I, I, I fully try to explain and in most cases, unless they get the furniture out of the room and out of the way, I'll just vacuum an edge real good and push it back in there and let them know that, uh, you know, this, is a, this would be a two-step process and I'd have to charge them uh, double, you know, for the same room. So I don't know what your thoughts are on that, but, you know, I've been around long enough and most of my clients are repeat clients. I get, you know, quite a few that... Uh, get referred to me that are new, like this one here. But I kind of set down the rules ahead of time. They're not really rules like, you know, you, you're not going to want to deal with me. But they're just things that are going to make the job go smooth and that you don't have any misunderstanding of what's going on. So you can see it's coming out beautiful. We're getting through this. And on that note about the misunderstanding, I will note on our first job, the client said it was a living room, dining room, upstairs, and a staircase that goes downstairs. So that's three areas. And then just a basement. And when I was on the phone, I tried to get the details as to how big's the basement. You know, is it one room? Is it multiple rooms? Is it subdivided? Well, she said, no, it's just a small room and then there's furniture around it. So I said, okay, so I quoted her based on the four areas, living room, dining room, the staircase, and the small basement. When we got down there, it was about an 1,800 square foot basement. Yes, it had some furnishings in it, you know, sofa, love seat, uh, pool tables, an elliptical, but there was so much open space it would have constituted at least four or five rooms. You know, I, I'll say any, a room or an area is 200 square foot. Anything above 200 square foot, I don't measure out and do it separately. If it's over 200 square foot, it's two rooms or two areas. So she was all been out of shape because no, I explained to you the guy on the phone, this, that, and the other, and he said they could do it for that. And I told her, I said, well, you explain to me. I'm the business owner. I answer the phone, and I remember having a conversation with you. In fact, here they are in the notes when I booked the job. And I showed her. And then the other thing was, not only was it the basement, it was a basement and two small bedrooms that were separate rooms. And her, her when I explained to her that, you know, I... I told her, I said, look, I understand there's a misunderstanding. I'll work with you and I'll do these other, I'll just charge you for two areas on this large basement and then I'll charge you for one more room and I'll catch the two rooms because she was saying, oh, there's a bed in there and there's not much square footage. And I never really have that problem with people misinterpreting square footage. I don't do it by the square footage. I do it by the area 
So, and you're welcome to move everything out yourself if you want to before we get there, but that's not the case. And she didn't want to do it. She said, I'm not paying any extra. And I feel like, you know, you're um, robbing me or what. It was almost like, you know, I don't do any of the bait and switch. And so I just told her, I said, well, I'm sorry you feel that way. And I don't want to start something and you not be happy. And I know we can't please everybody. It's awfully difficult, a home this size, to quote it over the phone. I try very hard to get all the details correct. And, you know, I'm sorry you feel that way. And she says, well, can you just do it? You're here. And I said, no, I'm sorry. You know, you'll have to reschedule or call somebody else. And I started to leave. And of course, my son, he was like, wow, why don't we just do the what we were here to do and I said well she wants it all done or nothing and and then I looked at him and I said trust me she'll she'll be out in just a minute <laughs> and lo and behold she comes out and says okay I'll agree to the two areas for the large basement and then I'll get two for one on the other two bedrooms look at that oh my goodness and I don't, I'm not one to give discounts or specials. I, I, I know that, you know, this time of year, yeah, it slows down. I remember being a carpet cleaner. Guys, gals, you can have the slowest season. I mean, typically I'll do maybe 20 jobs in a January or, you know, and then we start to get a couple jobs a day in uh, February. It takes a while, you know. It's a seasonal business. Look at that, beautiful. But you can't build a good business by, you know, shorting yourself. You're a business. It costs money to be there. Costs time, chemicals. You don't want to set a precedence with somebody that they can dictate to you, you know, what you're what they're going to pay. You know, if. If, if they're calling from Craigslist, maybe. <laughs> but this was not a call from Craigslist. This was a referral. Not this job, but the, the job before this. So anyway, back to this one. You can see it came out fantastic. We'll groom these footprints back out and go down. This is on the third floor, so we'll go down two flights of stairs, pack everything up bring my clipboard in with my invoice and we'll get paid and head out the door which we've already done so like I said we're gonna have our lunch and then head to the third and final job of the day looking beautiful there it is we thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to watch our videos We'll be posting more videos soon. Hope this helps somebody. Again, check the link in the description for where I get my products.